Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'd like to take a moment in announcing new series that we'll be creating which will involve programming with C and C++ on a Linux platform. This will be the first video in the series. What we'll be doing first in this series is setting up a programming environment that consists of Ubuntu and Visual Studio Code. Since Visual Studio Code is simple to download and set up, we'll go ahead and run through how to install Visual Studio Code and create our first C, C++ program. And once we know that our environment here is set up correctly, we'll be able to go ahead and start the series out. Let's go ahead and show you how to install it. In Ubuntu, it's very easy graphically. You can go to the Ubuntu Software Center, click on that, and it's also easy to install on various other different Linux distributions if you need help installing Ubuntu or many other different types of Linux distributions you can go ahead and find plenty of installs on my channel I'll go ahead and supply a link in the description to a video for Ubuntu the great thing about Visual Studio is that it's available for many different distributions and we're going to focus on trying to make these tutorials as generic as possible so users of various different types of Linux distributions as well as people on Windows and Mac OS who are interested in programming can follow along. So with all selected and this little magnifying glass so we can search, let's go ahead and search for visual. Should be the first thing that pops up here, and it is. And of course the great thing about Visual Studio Code is that it's available for almost every platform so you can go ahead and simply use this application across Linux, Mac OS, Windows. We'll go ahead and click the very first option here. It tells you that there's Visual Studio Code available which is a lightweight but powerful source editor. Let's go ahead and hit the install button for more information about it. There's information here at the bottom about the current version and some of the languages that it supports which there's much more languages because of uh, something that they call extensions. Let's go ahead and hit install and let the install begin. So put in your administrative password and authenticate that so it can install. And make sure you take a second and subscribe so you can follow the series along as we're releasing videos here on the channel. And once the application is installed all you have to do is hit the launch or go ahead and search for it. So once you've opened up uh, your new install of Visual Studio Code, the IDE will show you a welcome page, which just runs through a few items here, things that get you started, as well as help content here at the bottom, some videos, tips and tricks, uh, repos, etc. there. On the right-hand side, it gives you information of how to customize the IDE, as well as learning more about it and the commands that are available for it. The first thing I'm going to do is again focus on this right after we go through what's available here up top in the drop downs. File allows you to do things like you would expect, create new files, new windows, open existing files or workspaces and edit preferences as well as make saves. In edit you can undo, redo, cut, copy and paste also find various search patterns that are available throughout your projects. A selection just allows you to select move lines up and down as well as copy them and also add various things. So view is always important since you can go ahead and edit your appearance in here as well as edit the editor however you like it so you get a nice workspace that you can use. On Go that just gives you some shortcuts while you're programming. Debug allows you to use the debugger, start stop debugging and put in breakpoints and then on the terminal side you can actually build the current application that you're working with and even run it. And on Help that just allows you to get more help on how to use the IDE as well as various different types of documentation and notes as well as checking for update. On the left hand side of the IDE, we'll go ahead and minimize these real quick, you'll see that you have something called Explorer and Explorer is just really your project explorer which allows you to open various editors up and what they consider editors are just pages on the right hand side that you are working with and making edits to. Folders are just folders on your file system that you have opened and those can really be considered projects which we'll create one in a moment. And then on the bottom you have outline which we won't focus on quite yet. 
Let's go ahead and exit out of here. And as you can see, it says that there's no open editors anymore and it defaults you to some shortcuts here on the right hand side now. Search will allow you to search through various different folders and replace items inside of various files that you're searching through. You can make them case sensitive and even specify what types of extensions you are targeting. And then on the source control, you can actually get Visual Studio Code working with a repository so you can make programming a lot easier on yourself, allowing you to commit and pull down commits directly from here. We'll get into how to use this later, but just know that you can get this working with something such as GitHub and use a repository. Next is the debugging configuration. You can actually set up a debug configuration and then watch various variables on the stack as well as expressions that you might add in, which you can add through here, and view what's currently on the call stack, as well as what breakpoints you have available. Finally, an important part here, the extensions. Extensions are just add-ons from people who have submitted them for Visual Studio Code. That makes your life a lot easier. We'll actually be installing a few extensions in order for us to be able to run a C, C++ program in Visual Studio Code here. So let's uh, make the view a little bigger so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So zoom in, that should be pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and put it in the full screen mode here. If you made it this far, go ahead and take a moment to like the video. It really does help me out. And let's go ahead and search the marketplace for a C++ app. So if we just type in C++, we'll see a few options here. And the first option is actually what we want, the C, C++ app. And if we click on it, we'll see more information about it. It says that it allows you to debug C++ applications, browse them easier, as well as automatically fill in functions from available libraries. Makes life a lot easier while programming in C or C++. And you can see here at the bottom, more information on the package. Let's go ahead and install this package or as they call them, extension. And the ID will tell you once it's installed and enabled. Next, I wanna grab one more. So let's go ahead and type in run up here on the top for extensions. And what we want is the code runner. This is a great application for multiple different programming languages that allows you to build and run your application right in this Visual Studio code. I suggest using this no matter what language you're using because it's available for many different languages and you can see all of those various languages here. So some of the main ones of course is C, C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, PHP, Perl, Ruby, and that's just a few of the overall available ones. Let's go ahead and also install this package and it tells me that it is now enabled globally. And since we got those two packages, now we can go ahead and create a program. So going back to the Explorer, we're gonna go ahead and open up a folder. Let's go ahead and click the Open Folder button. This is where our project's going to exist. So I'm actually gonna use the Savvy Nick Documents directory. So if I click Documents, I'll go ahead and add a new folder in here. I'm just gonna call it Simple List for now. And I'm just gonna create that. You can of course call your project whatever you want and it could be located in any directory that you want. Since simple list is fine by me, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the OK button. Give it a moment to refresh real quick. And now you see that we have a simple list available here. And under simple list, we can now add a new file, a new folder, refresh it, as well as minimize or maximize the simple list. Also, if you right click, you can see that you can add a new folder to the workspace as well as edit settings, create new files. So just know that that's an option. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this welcome screen and then I'm going to create a new file. And that new file will be called main.cpp. This is pretty typical of C and C++ applications, naming the file main.cpp since the C++ compiler looks for main first in order to execute it and run your program. So since it's the starting place, main CPP makes sense to use for the name of the file. So let's go ahead and create that main function. Here at the bottom, you'll get occasional recommendations. So it says that there's a newer update for one of the C, C++ extensions that we just got finished installing. 
So I'm just gonna say to ask me later again, since I don't wanna install it right away. But of course you wanna stay up with the latest and greatest in your extensions. Let's go ahead and create that main function. The first thing we'll have to do is include the IO stream library so we can write in and out of the console. Once we've included that library, we're gonna go ahead and define int main, the main function. Keep these guys together. And then let's put some braces. And then in between those braces, we'll put our statements in. The statement that we're gonna put in here is just a simple hello world message to our console showing that our program is running and that it can spit something out into the console. The way we do this is, let's go ahead and do std colon colon here, c out. So c out's a function supplied by the IO stream library that allows us to print out characters to a console. And those characters are going to be hello world with an exclamation point. And I'll use one more standard library function called nline or endl and then I'll put a colon at the end to terminate my statement. And all that this does is creates a new line in the console after spitting out hello world. So finally, the last thing is I wanna return something. So this is just to tell whatever's executing this program that things have successfully ran. So we've defined a data type of an integer and that integer we're returning after all these statements inside of main have been ran and ran successfully is a zero to pass out of this function. Another thing to focus on is as you see this little circle up here next to main CPP, that just tells you that the that there are unsaved changes currently. So go ahead and hit control S or do file save in order to save your program as it is currently. And once you've saved it, you can simply run the code by hitting the play button up here in the right corner. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit the play button, give it a moment to compile and execute. And as you can see, what happened was it was our extension that we added in, that code run extension was executed a command which changed directories to our simple list project and ran a compilation of the main CPP and I'll put it a main program. And finally, it ran the program here in the directory that it was located in. So after all that was done, we see that our program spit out hello world exclamation point to the console and it created a new line which you can see here since we have a little bit of space before the program executed and everything was done in 1.71 seconds and you can see that that program exited with a code of zero which is great we'll go ahead and talk about debugging in the future whenever we start using it with our own program that we end up creating Instead, now I'll go ahead and exit out of here, and then I'll show you how to install Visual Studio through the terminal. It's just as easy as doing it through the graphical interface, but this is for users who don't necessarily have a graphical interface to use in order to install Visual Studio, and maybe want to install it on a different distribution rather than using Ubuntu. So some of the ones that I've already tried are Arch Linux, Kali Linux, Fedora, and CentOS, or really any distribution that has a package manager that can handle RPM packages or APT packages will be able to install Visual Studio Code. So it makes it a great IDE to use across various distributions of Linux. So let me prepare things real quick. And now the second way we're gonna install Visual Studio Code is we're gonna go ahead and find the dev package for Ubuntu here. And we'll do that by using a browser in order to find Visual Studio. So I think if we just type in Visual Studio Code here that we'll find the proper package. So Visual Studio Code, the first option here, I'll put a link in the description below. So we're on the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash code dot visual studio dot com. And then here we can see that we have different types of packages available. We can either download it for Debian Ubuntu or Red Hat Fedora and it gives us a few more options as well as Windows and Mac OS. Since I'm on Ubuntu here, I'm gonna go ahead and download the dot deb extension. So go ahead and use the stable version and your download should begin shortly. We'll go ahead and save this file and it will go into our downloads folder. It goes really quick. 
So I'm gonna just hit show all downloads and show you that it's currently download downloaded on the computer. Next what I'll do is launch a terminal. So let's go ahead and find terminal, open that up. Let me make the view a little bigger for you. Hopefully everyone can see that. And the next thing I'm gonna do is do sudo dpkgi, and then I'm gonna to point to the current package, which is located in the downloads folder. So as you can see here, I got sudo dpkg space dash i space the location of the dot deb package and then I'll put a colon here and execute another command as well so sudo apt install so that's sudo space apt space install space dash f which will help install any missing dependencies that we have for this package. I'll go ahead and put this command in the description below. Once you have that, go ahead and press enter. It's gonna ask you for a password, put it in, and give it a moment to unpack the package, and install it. And after everything's done running here, we should have the Visual Studio Code now installed. So let's go ahead and check. Go ahead, hit the Show Applications button here on the bottom left of Ubuntu, and then simply search for Visual Studio. If I type it in right here, there we go, Visual Studio, and launch it, and welcome to your new Visual Studio Code IDE. It's successfully installed at this point, so you can go ahead and follow the instructions previously explained in the beginning of the video to show you how to use Visual Studio Code just a little bit. But at this point, uh, you are ready to go ahead and install a few extensions for Visual Studio Code, and you'll be able to run your application right away. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on use and install Visual Studio Code. I hope you keep coming back for the rest of the series. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Please post them in the comments section below, and also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.